Hey everyone, the name is Victor and today I want to talk about INFJs. Are INFJs fake or are they authentic? And honestly, this is a difficult question and I don't know even if I'm a fake or if I'm authentic. How do you know if you're being real or not? How do you know what's real or not? How do you know what's truly authentic? What I've always felt when I share, when I talk to other people is I cannot truly convey what I'm feeling. I cannot express what I'm feeling. I don't know what I'm feeling. It's hard to express what you're feeling. It's hard to explain your own feelings. When I was younger, I was uh, struggling to be conscious of even the most basic things such as am I in love? Do I like this person or not? What do I like? What do I want? Who am I? What am I supposed to do with my life? And a lot of my life then revolved around the experimentation. I didn't know what I wanted, so I returned or retreated into myself, trying to find out and figure out those questions. And yeah, that was the philosopher side in me, just wanting to ask myself questions, sit by myself, think long and hard. Who am I? What do I want? <laughs> what is the meaning of life? And um, the ridiculousness of that only... Uh, fell on me when I was around 15, 16 and I had become completely isolated by my own questions. I thought I couldn't face the world and express myself until I truly knew myself. But in reality, it was that I had to go out to the world and express myself to know how I truly felt and to know who I truly was. It was only by talking with other people, making friends and real relationships and having real experiences that I would get the answers that I was seeking. You think to yourself, uh, that it's all about finding answers and then doing something, coming up with a project or a plan and then executing the project or the plan. That's how we all think life is supposed to work, but more often than not, especially when you wander in the dark, as I like to do, you have to go out and you have to stumble and you have to fi figure out the way as you go. So authenticity for me is, uh, being truly conscious of who you are and what you are feeling and expressing and conveying yourself in a way that is true and real and truly sharing of yourself who you are, truly expressing yourself and everything you are feeling without filters, without putting anything on, without expanding or making something feel bigger than it is or without uh, taking away or hiding or covering something up that isn't that you don't dare to say or talk about with other people uh, to blend in or to be like everyone else there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you like to do and that's what who you are but to cover up yourself and to pretend to be someone else to fit in that's fake that's the trap that we all risk falling down so are INFJs fake? Are INFJs real? Are INFJs authentic? I think INFJs need authenticity, need to be honest, need people that are real with us. And I think uh, INFJs themselves, they are people that aspire towards authenticity, but they are not necessarily authentic people. And I think INFJs aspire towards authenticity and honesty as in they want to and they search for it, but they will never truly possess it. They will never be truly authentic people, never truly natural people because a part of them is always lost to them. There is always some kind of depth that is missing. There is always something hidden. We are people that have 90% of our own imagination and our own feelings inside and we even if we try, we'll never be able to truly communicate that outside to other people. Of course, that should not stop us from trying. We should every day try to make ourselves heard and understood by other people. But there is always going to be one part of us that will feel inherently misunderstood. You know, there's uh, that problem of being feeling lost in translation you know I'm I'm a Swedish guy dating a Dutch girlfriend and we don't speak the same native language and that's a challenge so <laughs> some of our misunderstandings fall under loss in translation we don't know how to say things we don't know how to express things some of the cultural signals that I've learned as a Swedish person she does not understand and have never heard or seen or come across so how does she know my intentions how does she know my feelings how does she know what I'm saying and how does she know it is real 
a problem I feel in relationships is how do we trust other people? How do we know if what they are saying is real? How do we what do we choose to believe or how do we choose to read a situation? We all have you know our own script that we feel a fa sense of fate. You know, this is how things are. People are always lying to me. People are always manipulating me. People are always using me. You know, uh, some of us run through these scripts and uh, they shape how we experience and perceive what other people do. Something that is as simple as a misunderstanding or a stupidity is sometimes falsely attributed to malice. So we believe people have bad intentions or are lying or being deceitful when in reality maybe they don't even know themselves what is right and wrong. So another question is should we wait until we know ourselves before we start dating or meeting other people? And as I told you before, no. No, we get to know ourselves by meeting other people, but, and there's a big but here, big but, uh, there's a big but here, and that's if uh, when we are with other people, we are being fake and deliberately deceitful, and if we are covering up things about ourselves, if we don't admit to wanting children or not wanting children, or if we admit to loving to travel or not wanting to travel or travel, or if we settle and adjust and compromise too much, we are not going to be learning about ourselves. In fact, uh, we will be covering ourselves up. The only plus side is, I think, it is in these conflicts and in these lies and in this uh, act of covering up, we also learn for ourselves what is real and what is wrong. Because as we do, we experience the stress of giving up an important aspect of ourselves. For example, not traveling because we don't want to uh, scare our partners who prefer to keep things easy and settle down. Or uh, pretending not to want kids because... Uh, yeah, maybe our par our partner doesn't want kids, you know, <laughs> saying we don't want marriage, even if we want marriage, you know, all those small, big, small things that seem small at first, but become a big deal later on, causing us to feel stress or anxiety or even depression. That negative feeling is a lesson in what is real and what is not, and uh, that depression, that struggle, and that shame or whatever it is you're feeling in that situation, that's a revelation of your own lack of consciousness and awareness of self and who you are. So it is a reminder and a warning bell that can teach you, wait, this is who I am, this is what is important to me. And that will cause you to fundamentally grow in your relationship with other people and to feel better and more authentic. I think when we are young, I think there is a part of us that is always a little bit inauthentic, you know. You can't hide from that because you're born without a roadmap. Nobody tells you who you are. Nobody lays it out for you or explains it to you. Nobody will tell you the consequences of the decisions you are making right now. And the shame or the anxiety or the anger or the frustration you feel, nobody will explain why you feel that way or why you think that way. So the only thing you can fall back on, and this is something I learned from feeling and perceiving types every day, is I feel the way I feel, you know. Nobody can tell me what to feel. I feel the way I feel. <laughs> and that's a very important uh, self-affirmation. And that's something I think everybody should work with. I feel the way I feel, you know. You cannot tell yourself not to feel a certain way. You can feel a certain way and choose to do something that goes against your feelings, but you cannot fundamentally deny your feelings or pretend they're not there. The shadow is a real uh, threat to our personality, a constant threat to our personality, you know, it grows bigger every time we say it doesn't exist, we, it grows darker and more painful to bear, more heavy every time we hide from it and every time uh, it lays itself out for us and we refuse to accept it. The only thing we can say is, you know, sometimes there are parts of us that we refuse to accept, you know, there, there are parts of me that I refuse to accept, parts of me that are truly me and parts of me that are truly important to me that I refuse to accept and here's the reason why INFJs are sometimes seen as inauthentic. We're seen as inauthentic because our desire to do good for other people and to help other people uh, sometimes will come at the expense of self. Sometimes we're fundamentally going to deny important aspects of ourselves. We're going to pretend we're not stressed or tired or hurt in order to help other people better. We'll pretend or set aside or ignore our own feelings so that we can focus on what the group wants. 
and in that yeah we can it can feel like we are deliberately misleading other people and we can give a bad impression to other people and uh, we can think that other people don't see it and we can think that we are uh, fooling others but in reality we are only fooling ourselves most of the time other people are truly aware of the anger we feel truly aware of the stress we are faced with and they see it and they notice it and we cannot hide it you know uh, it's there and it leaks out you know even uh, a deep iceberg has a tip and everyone can see the tip and yeah they might not know why you're stressed or why you're angry or why you're hurt but they will see it is there so in one way you know and that's something very reassuring we can never be truly inauthentic with other people we fundamentally ever always reveal ourselves and reveal a deeper truth and uh, so there are things you cannot hide from <laughs> There is nothing eventually that you can hide from. Everything will eventually discover you. Everything about yourself will eventually find itself. Everything in inside us, consciousness-wise, is being pulled to one point. Everything is converting to one singular aspect of self. Everything is finding and searching for it, harmony. So that's the reassuring truth and why we are on a quest towards authenticity and consciousness and towards being real and finding out who the real us are. But that quest can take time and, you know, Part of that will be lying sometimes, bending the truth, hiding from things, pretending to not see things, pretending not to notice things uh, in yourself and in other people. And uh, here I think forgiveness of lies and deceit is also important. And recognizing that when people are lying to you, most of all they're not trying to lie to you, but they are trying to lie to themselves. And we're all involved in some acts of deceit, we're all involved in hiding from things. And you know, um, more often than not it's about them not about you so not her taking it personally that's that's the important part so I hope this video cleared up some things about INFJ authenticity and whether INFJs are fake or not leave a comment down below share your thoughts and experiences with INFJs and truth and how you see truth and being real and being authentic thanks for watching everyone and hope to see you all in the next video